one scripture tells us that he stands so much on his word that he places his word above his name. The word being above his name. So therefore, that means that you've, you've heard people when they say, if I said it, then you can count on it, right? That means what? They put their word that high. And God does the same thing with his word. He places his word, the Bible, and we got to look at it as not just history. And we dealt with some of this when we was when we was in the doctrinal book, and we will go back to the doctrinal book. Um, but but it, it 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 talked about that it's more than just the history book. It, the Bible is more than than just the book filled with a collection of, of, of stories and facts. Um, the Bible is God's living word. So when we start talking about this is a living word. Somebody say living word. That means it is alive and it's, and it's full of power. God's word is alive and full of power. However, though, we, we must take God's word off the pages. Okay? Now, and, and so therefore, we can't look and expect God's word to work and to operate in us is the only time we, we, we utilize it or to put trust in it is while it's on the pages. Hello? But what we have to do is to take the word off the pages and place them inside of us. And once we place them in us, then it, it, it now the word now becomes planted in our heart. And God desires for this thing to be planted in us. And when we do, I want you to know the word will live. It's just like a pack of seed. If you take a pack of seed and buy it and, it, and you have the pictures on the front of it, and it tells you how beautiful the flowers can look and all of this, all you're going to have is an image of it, never an experience of it, if you do not take the seed and plant it. Hello. So what we have to do is take the seed out of the packet, place it in the ground, and then believe that it's going to grow. It's the same with the word. We got to take that word and we got to place that word in our heart. And once we place it in, it'll live, it'll thrive, it'll grow within us. And one thing that it's going to do is definitely going to bring forth a harvest. How many of you people are coming to church and you really want a harvest? Amen. Or, or, or are we just doing it, just doing it and not really looking for anything? I believe that if we take the word, plant it, and speak on that word, that a harvest will come. All right? So, so Hebrews, Hebrews 4 and 12 is actually going to be our springboard scripture. And then what I want, what I want y'all to do is I need some readers today. I need some readers. And, 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 and I, I, need, I need somebody to read for me 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. Can I get, who's going to do that for me? 2 Timothy 3, 16, 17. Thank you, sir. All right. I need someone to get Acts 1, 16. Thank you. Jeremiah 36 and 2. Jeremiah 36 and 2. Thank you, ma'am. 2 Peter 1, 21. Thank you. Ezekiel. 1 and 3. Ezekiel 1. Thank you, man. And the last one, Revelations 14, 13. Revelation. Thank you, man. Okay. Now, when we look at this and we go into this, we're going to see uh, how important the Word of God is to God. Because uh, God wants us to know without a doubt uh, uh, if we put trust in the word, the word will work for us. The word will work for us. There's no if and buts about it. Uh, uh, he lets us know that his word has been settled in heaven. And so therefore, it's going to operate 
if we use it. So therefore, in our prophetic voice this year, as I said a few minutes ago, we are going to become a community, amen, of prophets, a prophetic community where everybody is going to be speaking the word of God, believing that what you say is going to come to pass. We're going to say it and we're going to believe it. Now, 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 Hebrews 4 and 12, it says, For the word of God is quick and what? Powerful. Then it says, and it's sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is a what? Discerner of the faults and intents of the heart. Now, this is the thing. The thing is, this tells us that the word discerns uh, the faults and the intent of our heart. Uh, isn't that something? Now, now, so, so therefore, what is a discerner? A discerner is someone that can pick up on things before anything is ever said or done, right? A person that has discernment. So the Bible says that the word of God can discern what's in your heart before it ever come out. So, so the thing is, is this. So what we got to do is we got to believe that the word of God, when we allow it to come into our lives, that it is showing me an accurate image of who I am. Hello? Whether you like it or not. Paul said, Paul said in Corinth, uh, he said that the word of God is like that of a mirror. So therefore, it shows me an image. It shows me the image that God wants me to deal with. Mm -hmm. So therefore, I don't understand, I don't understand how it is that we can say that we're studying so much, but we never see us. We never see us. We see everybody else. But the design of the word is not to show you somebody else. The design of the word is to discern what's in your heart, to discern what he's trying to do in your life. Hello, somebody. So, so, so it says that it is powerful and that it'll cut right down to the soul and to the marrow of the individual. So the word of God is powerful. Somebody say, the word is powerful. So when we look at this, every scripture we find out and we know that every scripture is given by the inspiration of God. So God inspires the word. So therefore, the word that is released in scripture was inspired by God to deal with us in situations in which we may face. Mm -hmm. So people receive the word of God directly from him. So, so, so the individual that, that wrote the word, they did not just write this of themselves. Mm -hmm. God released this word. And you know what else the good thing is? Is that, and we're going to see it in a few minutes, but what we got to grasp and what we must understand is that God is giving us words too. Hello? But what we do is we don't pay what he tell us any attention. Mm -hmm. But God is still speaking even today, he have not stopped talking. Why? Because his word lives. Mm -hmm. And if it lives, it communicates with us. If it's communicating, that means there's a conversation going on inwardly. So the word says something, we say something, and the word addresses it again. So therefore, his, he's constantly talking to us about our situation. Hello, isn't it awesome that God will love you enough to, to not to leave you, but to just keep talking to you right through your problems? Mm -hmm. so, so, so when we see, the first thing we're going to look at, they received the word directly from him, and then they did what? They said they wrote it down. Look at somebody and say, write it down. Yeah, yeah, sometimes we got to write stuff down. When God says something to us, sometimes we need to put it down. We need to write it to make sure while you're studying 
and reading the word and God drop a word in your spirit, write it somewhere. Don't just look, don't just think that there's something. And sometimes we just want to say, whoa, God is good. But God says, I'm giving you a word for a reason. A harvest is going to come. Write it down. Somebody say it again. Write it down. Write it down. All right? 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. Who has it? So, so the word is coming to do what? To perfect us. It's coming to perfect us. It's coming to, 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 to bring rebuke to us. Hello? It's coming to chasing us. It is coming to bring correction in our life. So there again, we got to look at this thing and we must know that the word is coming to develop us. And we have to have a desire to be developed. Amen. And the word desires to develop us to the place where, without a doubt, that it'll bring correction, but most of all, it says, it'll give us instructions in what? Righteousness. So it'll instruct us how to live right. That's what the Bible is for. See, but what most of the time, church folk, we, we, we become so religious that we've taken the word now to use on other folk. So we want to we wanna use the word, the, the, we, we become so religious and, 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 and things now that now that we're getting it and we're, we're trying to make sure that it's like, no, but the word got to start with us. It got to start with the individual. It comes to bring instructions to us first. Amen. And sometimes what we got to do for remembering, we got to write it down when he drop it in there. Hello? When he show us how nasty we was, write it. See, we ain't going to like that. We ain't going to like it. But when, when he show us uh, 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 that, that you ain't have no business, when he drop it in your spirit and say, you know, write it down. See, because then what God is doing is revealing a word to bring a change in your life. All right? What's the next one? Uh, uh, Acts one sixteen. Acts one sixteen. Who got it? So he's telling us what that the first thing is the scripture has to be fulfilled, right? The scripture has, must, needs, have been fulfilled which the Holy Ghost by the mouth of David spoke before concerning Judas. So the thing is, the word has to do what it said. There's no way around it. It has to be fulfilled. If God drops a word in your spirit that he is going to save somebody, I don't care what it looked like, he said that it must be fulfilled. And that's the thing we got to grab. And when we, when, we, when we start speaking the word prophetically, what we got to grasp and understand is that there are no time restraints on the word. None whatsoever. Because when you look and you talk about Judas, this thing was said about Judas way before Judas ever done what Judas did. But it came to pass. So the thing is, is this. If I keep it written, if I, if I keep it written, if I write it down and keep reading it, after a while, it's going to become written in my heart. And then before long, I don't care how long it's going to be, but after a while, one day I'm going to get out of my bed and I'm going to walk in to my blessing. I'm going to walk into whatever God said he was going to do. But I got to believe the word. Gotta believe the word. Because he said it will be fulfilled. All right? All right? What's the next one? Jeremiah. Jeremiah, where you at? Talk to me. Read Jeremiah. Take you what? A roll of a, a book and do what? Ho, ho, ho. He said, 
said, now take a roll and write it down. Everything that I told you, if I spoke the words that, that, that against Israel and against Judah, he told the prophet Jeremiah to write them down because I'm going to do it. Write them down. And then he says what? From the day I spake unto thee. From the day of what? So therefore he was basically saying from the time of, of, of the earliest king to, the, to this particular time, I am going to perfect. And if I said Israel's coming out, Israel coming out. Hello, somebody. If I said Judah was going to be my chosen people, I know they are in captivity right now. But Jeremiah let them know if I said it, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. And see, that's when we got to grab it. When, and when we start speaking this word throughout this year, when God dropped that thing in our spirit, it don't matter. He said, from the time of Josiah, even until this day, he's basically saying, I don't care how long it's been. I don't care how long it's been. If I said it, God knows I'm going to do it. Tell your neighbor, write it down, write it down. Write it down. You got to get it down. Get it down. You know how they do it. That's why they give you homework. You used to tell you, give you homework. Go home. Make it write it. The more you write it, then write it. And then what y'all do is run. Tell them children, write it three or four times. And, and the more you write it, the more it get in you. And the more you get in you, the more you'll start saying it. And, that, and so what are you doing now? You are doing what God was telling Jeremiah to do. Jeremiah was a prophet. And Jeremiah had to prophesy to God's people. So he told him, Jeremiah, I want to make sure you get it good. So write it down. Get it down. And then I want you to let them know. Because when it get in you, you'll start prophesying at, at ease then. Hello? You won't even have to worry about it. You ain't going to have to look for it. It's just going to flow out of your mouth. That God's going to deliver. God's going to make you whole. God's going to bring you through. God is healing. It'll flow. So we got to get it down. We got to get it down. Peter, what are you saying? Where you at, Peter? The prophet what now? The prophecy came not in old time by what? By the will of man. So what is this telling me? Ain't got nothing to do with man. Man did not will for you to get that word. Man did not will for you to get a word that'll live. Hello? <laughs> for the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man. But what? Holy men of God did what? As they were what? Moved by the Holy Ghost. What are you saying now? Now, when God releases the word to you, it ain't, it's no longer you saying it. <laughs> see, and that's what we got to get. See, see because the, the enemy is never going to want you to speak. The, the prophetic word of God because he know the word that God releases is going to come to pass. So he don't want you to say it. So therefore, don't think it's the enemy. The, 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 the Holy Spirit is going to cause you to continue to say what the word is saying because the Holy Spirit is going to work that thing. Good God Almighty. I, I, aren't you glad that the Holy Spirit know how to work it out? And, and he's going to cause you to just keep saying it. You, you ever been in a situation where it got hard, you had tears in your eyes, you were struggling, and then all of a sudden, something wake up on the inside and you start saying stuff? Baby, that ain't you. That's the Holy Spirit down on the inside speaking that prophetic word that God says, I'm going to deliver you. It don't matter what's around you. Yes, you are in a wilderness, but I'm getting ready to cause uh, rivers to flow in wildernesses. Don't worry about it. I'm going to dig some ditches right where you are. Don't worry about it. And it brings peace and calmness to your spirit. It ain't you. It's the Holy Spirit. And we got to allow him to work and to speak in us. That's who it is. It's the third part of the Trinity. You got them all. 
when you got one, you got the Father, you got the Son, you got the Holy Ghost, you got all of them, but, and, and, but each one of them have their task. And the Holy Spirit said, I rise up in you. But we got to allow him to. We got to let him. Amen. All right. Come on, talk to me, Ezekiel, where you at? The, the word of the Lord did what? How did it come? It came what? How did it come? What is expressly? Quickly, fast, and what else? Directly to whom? To Ezekiel. Because the word of the Lord came expressly unto who? Ezekiel the priest. So basically what he's saying is that we, we and, and we know now that we are the priests now. Hello, somebody. And the word God is saying, I can send a word expressly to you. <laughs> and you got somebody sitting right next to you, and they don't get it. Hello. You can be sitting in the house at the kitchen table. Everybody eating, and all of a sudden, you, oh, 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 what in the world going on? Hello, somebody, but he can speak it expressly and directly to the individual. That's the good thing about God. God can talk to me in an in a, in a elevator that's crowded, but he can let me know as soon as I step off, I'm stepping out of the elevator into my deliverance, and ain't nobody around me heard nothing. Why? Because he speaks expressly to the individual. Tell your neighbor, God got a word. Just for you. Just for you. It ain't for nobody else. It's expressly for you. He got a word just for you. Revelation 14. Speak Revelation. Okay, so so we're saying, John the Revelator said, I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me. Now, this is what we're talking about this, this, this year. That we are, without doubt, we're growing deeper in heaven's prophetic authority. So heaven speaking. He said, I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, right. Huh. Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord. From where? Henceforth. Now, I, I, I want to share with you because this, this particular verse is used often in, in, in funerals. But we ain't dead. We ain't, we ain't, we ain't at the funeral for us yet. Okay? So, so I want you to look at this thing speaking to you as a believer. And God is saying, the first thing that you got to do is you got to die. <laughs> so he says, <laughs> I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, right? Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord. So God is saying, uh, I, 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 uh, on, you got to die. Judy can't live no more. Because when Judy live, Judy will tell him something. <laughs> Hello? See, 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 see. He, he, he's saying, James, you, you, James got to die. He's saying, Charles got to die. And he said, boy, you should have been dead a long time ago. <laughs> but he's saying, he's saying, you, you, we have to die to ourselves. And he says, because once we die, then we can begin to see the blessings. We can't see blessings if we're living. We want the blessings of God, but we don't want to die. Hello, somebody. And, 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 and see, the thing is that when, when we hear the voice of God that God is trying to speak to us, what we got to understand is God don't speak the flesh. 
Uh, so flesh has to die. So when flesh die, then God can speak to us. Uh, we can get a word from heaven. How many of you need a word from heaven? Well, I come to let you know, you got to die. We, we have to die. And once we die out to ourselves, he said, then, 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 henceforth, he said, the spirit that they may rest from their what? This is what I want you to see. When, 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 when we are trying to do it ourselves, it don't work. Amen? But when we die to ourselves, then we begin to rest from our labors. Because we can't do nothing. We can't carry out a thing. Our labor uh, is nothing. He said even our right to perform is as filthy rags. He lets us know that we can't do a thing. But once we allow ourselves to die, then we can start seeing some stuff take place. We can start seeing some things come together. He says what? Well, that, that, that they may rest from their labor and their what? Works do what? Now, the thing is this. The works that is going to follow us, the works that we do here is the stuff that follow us. But if we're doing it in the flesh, we have nothing to follow us. <laughs> so, so the thing is, is we got to die now. Because that's why I said if we die now, we won't have to die later. Amen. Look at somebody and tell them, kill the flesh, kill the flesh. That flesh got to go. That flesh got to go. Y'all know we can be some nasty folk. Hello, somebody. That flesh will do some stuff. It'll stand up. You can't get no labor done in flesh. Hello? And if you're doing it, God ain't getting no glory out of it. So God is saying, first of all, let, we got to die. And once we die, then we can start resting in what he's doing. See, we can sit back and rest knowing that God's going to do it. Hello? He's going to do just what he said he's going to do. Is there anybody in here got any petitions on, on the altar? Hello? See, God wants you to know. God wants you to know if you die to yourself, he said you'll start seeing this stuff because you can't do it. Hello? Rest from your labor and let him do it in your life. Let him make a brand new you out of you. Isn't that good? My, 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 my. So, 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 so we look here. I'm almost there. I'm almost there. I got one more scripture. And then we're going we gonna to pray and we're going home. <laughs> All right, Iris. <laughs> John 14, 21 through 24. John 14, 21 through 24. See, when we look at this, why would God want his word written in a book? The reason that he wanted it in the book is because so we can know his commandments and keep them continually before us. See, Jesus said, if we love him, we will do what? Keep his commandments. Say again. There is going to be some struggle. But you know what? There's another thing uh, um, that, that we need to look at. Go to, let's go to Deuteronomy. Let's go to Deuteronomy. Because there is some struggle. It, 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 it can be difficult. It can be difficult. But we have to condition ourselves. And the more we condition ourselves, the more we are able then to, to handle and to walk in, in that type of love. Because um, the enemy don't want you to walk in that love. All right? I'm going I'm to read a couple of scriptures in, in Deuteronomy. Uh, Deuteronomy 17 and 19. Then I'm going to read um, Deuteronomy 11 and 18.
And see, what we, what we got to understand, see, this, this, the book of Deuteronomy is a restatement of law. That's what it's called. It's called basically, it's telling us that God was restating. He was a, a re-giving of the law to, to tell the people how they are supposed to live and how they are supposed to carry out things and do things the way God has called them to do because of all of the stuff that they've gone through. Now, y'all know this, and, but I'm going to share it with you anyway. Uh, we know that, that Deuteronomy is the fifth book of the, of, of the Bible. So the first five books of the Bible is really actually what the whole Bible is geared on. It's based basically on the whole first five books. The first five books tells us of a people that God went of his creation. Then it showed them walking with God and falling and God loving them and picking them up and doing a thing. Then, then the New Testament shows us the redemption that God provided for the people in the Old Testament. They, they, in between the New Testament and the first five books, told us of their, of their dealings and their walkings in disobedience. It shows them in captivity. It shows them all of those things. So the first five books shows us this. And Deuteronomy, as I said, was a restatement and telling them about loving God one another, about the loving of God, that he, he, he wanted them to know that there's no way that you can do this thing without this, all right? So Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 17 and 19, it says, it shall be with him, and he shall read therein all the days of his life, that he may learn to do what? Fear the Lord his God to do what? And these statutes to do what? To do them. So the thing is, he's telling them again. He's letting them know. That regardless of what's going on, we got to keep all the words of his law. We got to keep all his words. We got to keep all his words. Now, go to 11 and 18. 11 and 18. And this is a practice in Deuteronomy in how the priests and how they, how they carried this task, this task out. Deuteronomy 11 and, and 18, it says, Therefore, shall we lay up. Uh, these my words in your what? In your heart and where? And do what? For a sign upon what? That they may what? Frontlets between your eyes. Frontlets is, 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 anybody ever been to basketball camp? Anybody ever been to basketball camp? When you dribble, did they use that little thing where they put, they put a little thing on your, on your eyes to keep you, right, to keep you from looking down? To sin from seeing the ball. So to make you make you bounce the ball without seeing it. Okay? Because you got to learn how to handle it without it. Frontlets was something similar to that. Except the frontlets had the word of God written on them. So they went throughout their day with the word written on those frontlets to keep the word before them all day long. Now, what was that supposed to do? It was supposed to cause the word to become a part of them. The New Testament came along and said, now what we have to do, our frontlets is our heart. Now what we have to do is to get the word on our heart so that as we go through the day that the word of God will constantly be before us. I can't love folk without the word. Hello? I can't treat folk right without the word of God. If, 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 if I miss, if, if I'm, I'm, be, I'm just going to be straight up. If I miss, sometimes if I go a day, <laughs> sometimes without, if, without praying and reading, I know. I know. I know. Be just like a hungry man. Snapping. <laughs> it's the truth. It's the truth. Because the word, the word and communication with God helps to keep us in the place where we can get along. I can't get along with folk without the word. It requires the word of God to help to restrain us. And that's the reason he said, we got we to gotta keep it before us 
Paul said, Paul, uh, Paul made a statement. He said that we have to allow ourselves to become living epistles so that folk can read us. Hello? And so my thing is, what are they reading? If we don't have the word in us, but what God, what God wants us to do is to hide it in our heart. That's what David said. Thy word have I did hid in my heart that I might not do what? Sin against you. So when you do something to them or someone else, you ain't sinning against them. You sinning against God. See, when our actions are, when we doing stuff to folk, it's like just, I'm going to give them a piece of my mind. I'm going to let them know. I'm going to go on. I'm going to drop this hammer. And I'm, I'm going to go on and get them. God is saying, you ain't doing it against them. You're doing that against me. So every time we want to go and do that, we got we to gotta understand that, that the one that is releasing our harvest is the one that we are, are actually going against. And, and I, don't want, I ain't messing up my harvest. I, 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 see, I, I'm, I see it coming. So it's grand. I see a harvest this year. I see one greater than before. Now, y'all know I stand up here every year. And God bless me every year. Every single year, I say it, and God has not been slack concerning his promises. You got to get it, and you got to say it. You got to say it over and say it over, and no matter what it looked like, and you got to understand that you are not being delivered and you are not being blessed because of, of you. God... God, isn't this something that, that just think about that God would even have picked you out anyway? You know, and this is what I think about myself. Why in the world would you pick somebody like me? So I know it has nothing to do with how good I am or how great I am. It's, it's God. It's God. And if God has chosen us, what we got to do is to make sure that we carry out our part. Let's read John so I can let you go. John 14 and 21, our ultimate goal should be to, to conform into the image of Christ. And Jesus said, if, you, if we love him, we'll keep his what? His commandments. He said, he that has my commandments and does what? Keepeth them, uh, he it is that what? And he that loveth me shall what? So if you don't, you see what it says? He it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved by my father. So he's basically saying the father won't love you unless you love him. Am I, am I making, is that what it say? Is that what it say? Now, that is the one that created everything. Hello? And we can't get to the Father except through Christ. He said, and I will what? Love him and will what? Manifest myself in him. Don't you want to be, have him manifested in you? So, so, so when I love you, I'm loving him. And when I'm loving him, he's going to manifest himself in me. So that means that where I'm going, he's going to show up. That, that's why you can go places when he manifests himself in you, and you don't know why folks just bless you, because God is seen. Favor comes to him. And, and, and the thing is, and that's what, we look, that's what we're looking for. I, I want you to know the favor of God is better than anything else that you could have. I'm trying to tell you. You can live, you can live a lifetime on the favor of God. And, and, and that's the thing. We want God to manifest himself in us. The next verse says, uh, it, 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 it says, Judas said unto him, not as God, but Lord, how is it that thou with what? Manifest thyself unto us and what? Not into the world. 
Uh, so he's basically saying, how are you going to do this? Well, I told you a little while ago that the Holy Spirit has a manner that he can speak expressly to whomever he desires. Hello? And it's our responsibility to manifest him to the world. It's our job to let the world know who he is. It's our job to share with the world that God will make a way out of no way. Why? Because he's done it for me. And if he'll do it for me, he'll do it for you too. All right? Read on. Read on. Way to go. Way Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man what? Love me, he will keep my word. And my father will do what? Love him. There it is again. And we will what? And make our abode where? With him. So we'll come to him and we'll live with him. Amen. Go home. Last one. Last verse. He that what? Keepeth not my sins. And the word which you hear is what? But the father's what? So he's basically telling you, it ain't me, it's God's word. And got nothing to do. This. this is what the Father is saying to us. That we gotta love folks, we gotta do this, we gotta show this. And when we read and study God's word and the testimonies of those who wrote the Bible, we learn more about God's character. God will show up. God will deliver, but we must do what? Trust his word. Tell your neighbor, trust his word. We got to trust his word because Jesus said the words he speaks are spirit and life. His words make us spiritual. So when we got it, we got to get to the place where this year, regardless of what's going on, regardless of what we're faced with, Regardless of what, we are going to speak the word of God and we're going to hold to the word because the word is going to bring the change that we need. Amen? All right. All over the building, put them hands together and clap them hands. <laughs> Psalms Thank you for tuning in to Possessing the Keys of the Kingdom broadcast. Brought to you from the Sanctuary of Antioch Church Ministries in Bell Arthur, North Carolina, where the pastors are Charles and Lisa Lee. You, you may obtain to today's keys. message by calling our church office at 252-830-4053. You may also email your request to Antioch Audio Men at CenturyLink.net. Antioch offers a variety of ministry activities for Whatever all ages, including so our worship arts ministry children's church ministry, and youth praise and worship ministry. Heaven. Antioch is committed Whatever to an array of community-based programs that promote holistic health and it's academic empowerment. These programs include there. our annual community health fair, our four-star Possessing Open. the Keys of the Kingdom daycare and after-school program for children ages 6 weeks to 12 years of age, and our newly acquired academic enrichment and tutoring program for grades K through 8. You can we are also pleased to announce that we are an official teaching site for the Apex School of Theology. Please contact us at 252-830-4053 extension 102 to obtain an application or for more information. Thank you again for joining us today and we invite you to join us for Sunday morning worship services each Sunday at 10 o'clock a.m. Tune in to next week's broadcast for another inspirational message of faith, hope, healing, and deliverance. And please know that you too can possess the keys of the kingdom.